In today's video, I'm going to be doing video three of my video series with the DJI drone, which is the Telo, and also how we can control it with the Oculus Quest 2 by using pass-through. So I'm going to be focusing on a couple of components today. We're going to be looking at inputs. How do we capture the input for the VR controller so that we can basically take this guy off, land it, move it around. I'm also going to show you how we can use basically a planner that is going to serve as a geometry for the pass-through API. So we're going to be using the OVR pass-through layer to be able to do that and also displaying statistics on the Oculus scene. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. What we're going to be working on is actually implementing the drone controller. So this is going to allow us to control the drone with the VR joystick. So we're going to be able to basically press a button to take off, press another button to land it. We're also going to be able to move the drone around, you know, move forward, backward, change the altitude and so on. So the idea is that we implement the drone controller today. I'm also going to be implementing something called the drone action mappings that is going to allow us to basically use a dictionary in C Sharp to uh, bind different actions depending on the buttons that we press. So it's going to make it easier long term when we're looking at implementing different type of controllers such as hand controllers or also using BCI. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and open up the drone controller here. And right now there's really not any, there's no commands in here. We're going to have what I call the main commands. The main commands are going to be things like, you know, we're taking off, we're initializing the SDK, we're landing, actually applying emergency. Movement are going to be anything where we move the drone. So it's not going to be like a, a very generic command, but it's going to be more of a, okay, I want to, I want to move, but how far do I want to move the drone to? So that's what movement is going to, is going to be used for. So we're going to be spending a lot of time on this drone action mapping, which it might sound complicated at the beginning, but trust me, it's going to, it's going to make things a lot easier. So let me go ahead and start by creating a new. So what I'm going to do is I have to, I did it this way, but there's many ways that you can implement this. This is going to be an action ref. And for those of you who haven't done a lot of things with delegates, I recommend that you do that. Otherwise, this might sound a little more complicated, but all it is, is I'm going to basically overwrite the action, an action, and basically make it a reference action. That way, you know, if I'm passing in the a specific value to one of the actions, let's say that I'm moving the drone a certain distance, I need to ba basically I need to keep track of how far that drone needs to go, and I want to increment that as a counter. So this is how I implemented it. So we'll do, we'll also do a dictionary here for the different actions that we're going to have. So these are going to be the move input bindings. So I'm going to do dictionary, and then we'll just bring. Let me just make sure that dictionary. Make sure that I type that right. This one is going to be taking a drone action and I show you that in, in one of the earlier videos. And then I'm also going to have another type that's going to be an action ref. And the action ref in my case is going to be an integer. The integer types are normally is, is what you call a value type. So if you pass in a, an integer to a, to a method, it's going to, it's basically going to get duplicated because there's going to be a copy created. So by using this, it's going to allow me to basically keep a reference of that integer. So Anything that happens within that integer, regardless of who calls it, the value is going to be the same because it's, we're passing it by reference. So this might be a little bit more complicated that you that you need to learn. So I wouldn't really worry about if you don't understand it 100%. Just know that this is going to work, and, and by the end, I, I'm hoping that it's going to make a lot more sense. So we'll just create a new dictionary, and we'll just do, go ahead and enter there. And this is where we tell it, okay, what kind of things do we want this different movement actions uh, to do. So let's say that we create a new entry into this dictionary, right? And in this in this case, it's going to require that we pass in uh, an action. I'm going to say, okay, well, if I'm moving the drone to the left, how is it that I'm going to be moving the drone to the left? What action do I need to execute? So let me go ahead and do this. So it's going to be the direction. It's going to be the rest value that I'm passing in. And then I'm going to say handle direction, which I need to implement as well. So we'll implement that below. I just say OVR input. So this is going to be the bounds that are going to be causing the, the drone to move to the left. So in this case, I decided to use the secondary thumbstick. So I can say secondary thumbstick left. And then the other parameter that is this is going to be also taking is going to be the ref direction. So 
if I take the ref direction, I need to make sure that I'm using the ref key. So I'm just gonna say ref and then direction. And then I'm gonna say which drone command I want to execute. I'm gonna be using the RC command and that is a command that is going to allow me to control the, basically the movement of the drone. And then I'm also going to use something that I call the, basically it's like a, it's a format command. And this one is gonna take a couple values. It's gonna take the, the first value means that I'm gonna be moving the, the, the drone either on the, it's gonna be the X axis, but it's gonna be either a positive value or a negative value. So I'll just say this one is gonna be zero, 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 zero. And then in this case, because I'm moving to the left, I'm gonna specify, I'm also going to use another enum, which I call the drone, the drone speed type. Remember I set up that, that one for this specific reason. And then that's basically all we need to do in there. And then just, I already closed actual curly brace. That's gonna be the first entry that I have in my dictionary. So I'm gonna have multiple in here that we can, that we're going to be implementing. And then I'll explain to you how, how all of this works. I think for the most part, the only thing that I need to do here is I need to be bringing in system because that's an action. Then I believe the drone state manager, it's going to be a star stats. Okay. And then also this one, let's see, drone client. This is to start the client, start the drone. Start, let me just make sure. Let's go ahead and take a look at the drone client implementation. I thought I had a, a oh, okay. So this actually needs to be public because we're gonna be starting the drone UDP client and also the thread uh, by binding it to a bang on the VR controller. So that one needs to be public. And then this needs to be, a star drone and also this as well. I actually renamed some of these variables. It's gonna be drone speed and then drone speed and math. This is to clamp a value. I'll explain to you how this works. Okay. This looks like a lot of generics and a lot of actions and a lot of advanced uh, things that we do in C sharp. And, but trust me, it'll make it a lot easier when we start defining how these ones get called. But what I'm doing in here is I'm creating a dictionary of basically binding what each button on the VR controller is going to be attached to which drone action. So if the drone action left that I want to listen to, if that is executed, what are we listening to as far as like on the controller? Well, we're listening to the thumbstick left. That way we can move the drone to the left. Same thing with the right, same thing with, you know, moving the drone uh, forward, it's going to be tongue, tongue stick up and then thumbstick down is going to be backward. If I want to bring the, the, basically the elevation, the altitude on the drone, what is the action? It's gonna be up or down, so I can bring the, the drone down. If I wanna tilt the drone, how is that going to work? Well, in this case, I'm gonna be using the, this is gonna be counterclockwise, so it's gonna go on the opposite direction of the clock, and then this one is gonna be clockwise. These two actually need to be positive number, and that's because I know I looked at the specs and I had that bug. But the thing that I wanna show you, and then I also have, well, before we look into these methods, I also have what's called core action input bindings. And these are core actions that are gonna allow to allow us to basically initi initiate the SDK. So the first thing that is gonna happen is when the secondary index trigger button gets pushed, I'm gonna start the drone, which is gonna create a thread. It's going to also you know, create the UDP client. And then I'm going to also call into the initialized SDK, which is also going to have different actions. So if you look in here, the initialized SDK is passing a uh, basically a, a delegate, a lambda. And then I'm, ca I'm calling handle core action by pressing the button one. Once that gets executed, I'm going to basically send this command to the drone, which will work on creating a drone request. I'm going to say, okay, I'm gonna initialize the SDK, but you know what, after that happens, I'm going to also start the stats. So that we're gonna start getting stats automatically. In the standalone version, we have to push a button. In this version, we're going to be basically using our controller the button one to basically start those two things. If we wanna take off, we're gonna be using OVR input button two, and then we're gonna be sending this command to the drone with a control command and also take off. If we wanna land, emergency, they're just different buttons. So if we wanted to add more commands, uh, let's say you wanted to combine buttons and things like that, you can always come in here and add another, you know, another key to the dictionary and just bind it to a different button. So I think this makes it really powerful if you wanted to make it more flexible, then I thought that this you know, dictionary with actions made sense. So the handle core action, which is the ones that get executed from this dictionary, that takes a bang and then a, a, 
uh, an array of actions. The reason that I did that is because we could have either one action that we execute, like you see in landing, when we're landing, we're just basically executing one action. But when we're initializing the SDK, I need to basically make sure that it is initialized and I also want to start the stats. So those are two different actions and that's why you see there's two lambdas in here, one here and then one here. And this is gonna go through each one of the callbacks and invoke the callback. By using params, it basically allows you to, to, to define one action versus multiple actions. So that's why that code here works when I'm doing just one action. But if I were to come in here, say that I wanted to do, perhaps you wanted to do another action, you're gonna see that it's requiring that you pass in another action. So I could technically, if I wanted to do another action of something like this, I could, you know, I could do that if I wanted to by just doing, doing a comma. And I could chain him, I could add another action and then another action and another action because we make this flexible enough to take as many actions as we want it. But anyways, we can delete that code and then just do the one action. The handle direction is a little bit more complicated, but it takes in a button, it takes in a direction, it takes in a command that we're gonna be executing, also the command format. So here's some of the command formats and also the core commands are going to be in here and also the drone speed type. The speed type, it could be like, it could be a positive number or a negative number. For the most part, at least some of the values that I saw, it's either a negative from a negative to a positive number, but other commands such as these ones, they're always going to be through a positive number. And if you look at the specs of the Telo, you're gonna see that it goes from, I think it goes from like zero and then a very high number. I'm going to basically add that as a parameter here so that you can specify in this case, I did math.clam on the payload so that if we're decrementing, let's say that we go here and we're decrementing based on the speed, the direction, we're basically gonna be decrementing the direction, right? But if we get to a value that is less than negative 100, I wanna make sure that I clamp the value at negative 100 and we don't go to negative 200 and then all of a sudden the drone SDK blows up because that's not a value parameter. So that's what I'm doing, clamping here. And then I also do that on a maximum. So the minimum number is gonna be negative 100. The maximum number is going to be 100. I'm gonna tell it here what the command, what the control, com this is gonna be a control command because anything that I'm doing in here is controlling the drone. And then I'm also sending using my drone client instance and command, passing in a drone request, which is a control command. Also the command that I'm specifying through the parameters here and also my payload. So it's gonna happen when I'm pressing, you know, if you're, if you're holding your thumbstick up, Basically, it's going to be, it's gonna keep incrementing the value, sending those messages to the drone. And then when I let go of the button, it's gonna set the direction to zero. So if we're moving forward, let's say the drone, and then we let go of the button, basically the drone is now going to stop. So this is what I did. I'm sure there's many ways of handling this, but now that I have these, we can go into the drone controller and we're gonna start binding how some of these methods are going to basically get executed. We're gonna be needing to declare a couple of variables that are gonna be a reference in integers that we're gonna be keeping track of. So the forward direction, backward direction, left and right. These are all gonna be the ref types that I show you on the, on the actions that we're gonna be passing into the input, the actual movements. So if we look at some of the main commands, these are not gonna require that we pass in any integers, but it, they're gonna require that we, you know, we tell it what kind of thing we're going to be binding to. So the way that it's gonna work is, is I thought it was pretty cool. So you can do drawn action mapping, and then you can do instance, and I can do core action input bindings. And remember, this is a dictionary, so I can say, okay, what kind of, what kind of drawn action is it that we want to listen to? So I'm just gonna say, you know what? I wanna listen to connect. And that's really, it's gonna be a meta, right? Because remember, it was an action. So that's really cool because now, you know, I don't really need to know the underlying, how these input bindings work. All I really care about is that this is the action that I want to execute. And the dictionary takes care of, okay, how is it that is this gonna happen and which button is gonna be bound to, to what? So I thought that was a pretty cool way of implementing that. So the other thing that I'm gonna do is I also wanna do initialize SDK. So it's gonna be bound to, to this one. So remember, this one is going to start the drone. This one is going to initialize the SDK and also making sure that we start, you know, the stats. The other thing that I also want to do here is I want to make sure that we don't allow people to take off or land if we haven't really initialized the SDK. So I'm going to say drone client instance and then SDK is not initialized. I'm just going to be returning. 
So we can display a warning if you like to. I mean, I don't really have a preference there, but that just tells you that, you know, we don't really want to do anything else because you haven't initialized or connected the SDK. So let me, con let me copy a couple more of these because we're gonna need three more. So if you look at a couple of other ones, the next one that I wanna do is I wanna be able to take off. The next one that I wanna do is I wanna be able to land. So I'm just gonna say landing. And lastly, is one that I really like, and that is the, the emergency, right? So by doing this now, we're gonna be able to connect, we're gonna be able to initialize, take off, land, and then emergency with our VR controllers. So, okay, so that's cool. So now how do we do movement? And movement is gonna be very similar, except that we're gonna be accessing a different dictionary. See, so movement, input bindings. And if, we, if you remember, this one is, movement is gonna be a different, so this one is gonna be, let's say that we wanted to move the drone forward. It's gonna air it out because it's going to need uh, basically an integer that it's going to use to, to keep track of it. So it's gonna be the forward direction. In this case, we need a ref because we don't want this to get copied. We want this original integer to keep, basically be the source of truth. And anything that happens to it through any depth, any cyclomatic complexity, is going to, it doesn't matter because it's not gonna get copied, it's just gonna be a reference. Anyway, so we can do the same thing here for backward, left, right. I think this one is gonna be up, down, rotate left and rotate right. And all we really need to do here is I can just say, on this one I'm gonna be doing this variable, this one is going to be doing, just gonna do that, and then rotate right. And then what we need to do is, again, this one is gonna be up direction. I really like how Visual Studio tells you what you're using, that way I can keep track of which variables we have in copy. Okay, these ones are reverse. I'm gonna do rotate right direction. And then this one is going to be rotate left. Let me make sure I change the order so they are all in the same order. So that's really everything that we need to do to be able to track. So this is gonna listen on every frame to make sure that if we, you know, if we're basically pressing a specific button on the, on the VR controller, we're going to be any of this action. And if we want to initialize the SDK, we're going to be executing any of these movement actions. Is I wanna make sure that we complete, well, we start working on the drone pilot overlay. And if we go into that, just take a look at the, the overlay right now, right? So I have my canvas on the very top and everything should already be bound to, I think we looked at it before, but if I look at the drone state, you can see everything should be bound correctly to every single one of those and it looks like those are correct. And so the UI as it is, it should be bound, but this part right here, we haven't really told the Oculus integration, which I already have in here, and I'm using the latest available as of today. Some of those requirements I'm gonna be putting in the repo, so just don't worry about, about it right now. Just look at the repo and then look at the readme, because that's going to be there. But anyway, so this has a plane, and I rotated it at negative 90 degrees. I also changed the positioning and also the canvas positioning. So in order for us to be able to view past that, we're gonna need to also enable pass through. But if you look at the OVR manager, you're gonna see that we have a couple options in here, which I already said, experimental features enabled. We wanna make sure that we have that pass through capability enabled and also enable pass through. And then the other thing that I also need, let me go lapse this, which everything there should be okay, is the projection surface is going to be user defined. So what does that mean? That means that I'm going to be responsible for telling the OVR pass through layer which planes or which meshes are going to be the ones that we're gonna be able to, to see through. Well, in this case, it's easy because I already have it set up. All I want to be able to see through is this drone pilot overlay, because I'm gonna be able to see through that, but I wanna be able to see the digital world, the VR world, which is going to be living on the canvas. Okay, so that's cool, Dilmer, so how do we do it? Okay, let's jump into the code and look at that. We're gonna need a serialized field, just like I did on the previous classes, and I say OVR, and this one is going to be the pass-through layer. I'm gonna say OVR pass through layer. Once we have that reference to the pass through layer, now we can tell the system, okay, well, we have it. Now can we, we need to add which meshes are gonna, are gonna need the, basically the pass through. So I'm also going to be doing a private variable in here. It's gonna be invalid. And then I'll just set it to false. The next thing that I'll do is I'll just call the awake meta. We're gonna say if the OVR pass through layer, which is the reference that I just did, is equal to null, then we know that 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 thing is not supported, right? In the standalone version of this application, of this Unity project, this should always show because these, in this case, there's really not a pass-through layer for standalone. So we can just do, and then we can just say invalid equal true. 
Well, but what happens when we are valid, right? So I just say, if it's not invalid, this is what I want to do. If it's not invalid, I'm going to say OVR pass through layer, which I already, I should have access to now, and I'm going to be adding the surface geometry. Well, what is going to be the surface geometry is going to be this game object, which has a mesh associated with it. And I'm going to say this to true, because we're going to be updating the transform. So now that we have that, the other thing that I normally do in these scenarios, and this is recommended by, by some of the examples that I saw in Oculus, is we're going to say OVR pass through layer. If it's not null, we're going to basically just remove it. And this is for optimization, memory management, just to make sure that this is, you know, that we remove it. So I'm going to say remove surface geometry, and I'm going to say game object. This is going to require that I tell it, okay, what is going to be the pass through layer? Well, the pass through layer is in my OVR camera rig, so let me make sure that I associate that with it. And that's basically everything that we need to that we need to do. Let me go ahead and take a look at the diagram. I explained to you how we can communicate with the with the drone via UDP server, by connecting kind of UDP client and the drone client. It's multi-threaded. We went through all of that. We also look at the drone controller, how I implemented the drone action mappings, which for now just works with the controller, but we're going to be extending that on the next video to work with BCI and hand tracking. And I also show you how to implement the drone state manager that basically just gets the information from the stats from the drone client and then populates the UI, the UI components that we have bound to. I also show you in this video how to implement the drone pilot overlay, which basically tells the Oculus Quest 2 platform which, the, which meshes are going to serve as a pass-through. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any other questions, please let me know. Thank you.